Hey guys, how's it going? I am on my way to go look at a 71 CB350, we believe. Been sitting a long time. The, the gentleman owns it, is in the process of moving. Uh, he had an old uh, micro bus at one point. We were BSing about two weeks ago and he kind of told me about it. And I was inquiring what happened to his, to his bus when he sold that and they went along. But anyway, long story short, he told me about a bike he had in the back because my bikes, I was in a single cab with my homemade bikes. He told me about that. So it's come to the point where uh, he's gonna go do something with that and he's called me up. So I'm going over to go take a look at it. I figure I'll take you guys along after I get his approval to do some filming. So if you're seeing this, I already got that. And uh, we'll see uh, what it is and what it looks like in shape and all that kind of happy stuff. Adventure, you know, going on an adventure we are. What so, I was so impressed with was how clean everything was. No cracks, original tack, Speedo. Never been painted. Never been painted, not chips. There was no rust, the chrome. I mean, all the, the look at the rims. All of that stuff will come back. Just a little bit of pitting in the cap. Who, who was this doing the uh, the floats and stuff? What was going well, on? Well, no, with no, that? no, I, I took it apart to clean it and I, okay. I kept it separate so it didn't get lost. But all the parts are there. The only issue is one of the caps, the of the pins are back, so. Gotcha. And it, it's it, it's the motor seized right now, or what are you it's thinking? It's stuck right now, yeah. It wasn't the last time I kicked it, but then I was thinking, I was like, wow, that wasn't that long ago. But I guess it really was. It was probably about five years ago, last time I kicked these over. I know the tires are yeah. foobar. They could very well be close to original. Probably are. How many miles around? 30,000. Nah, they won't be. <laughs> what? They won't be original then. That one says Sears on it, yeah. Right. No cracks in the fins. Too bad it wasn't a 750. Yeah. I, those are really desired. Oh, of course. No, I've run Hondas. So, you know, you keep oiling them and maintain them. I had a 76 GL1000 that had 75,000 miles on it. That's not going to happen. Do you want to try putting it in gear and kind of bumping it back and no, forth I at didn't. all? Give that a shot. I've had a bunch of different, uh, more in the Yamaha than I am Hondas. Down here. And the key assembly works fine too. It's electric start. Yep, it does have, you know, both. It's electric. Well, if it wasn't stuck. No, obviously, uh, you know, I'll, we're but, in a tight spot. We get, yeah. I got a water filtration thing. I mean, it, if it's not something you want to get into, someone will grab it and I'll sure. hold it out from the back. Um, but. All right, well, I own it. I gotta go back and get my pickup truck. It's one of those where, yeah. It was looking like I wasn't gonna get it because the motor is stuck. It wasn't stuck before, but uh, 
know it's gotten rust down in the jugs it may or may not free up and we're kind of looking at you know if the motor turned over it was like 300 bucks which is fine but the fact that it's stuck it could go very easily getting freed up or it could be just you know a total bastard from there i just don't know so with that i figure 150 bucks i'm into it worst case scenario it should part out for that i just sell the whole bike recoup, recoup my money and you know maybe 50 bucks for my time so at least i can break even with that so i guess we're gonna go make a uh a video of getting this and uh see if we can get it freed up get it to run you know the whole process all the way through and uh, whether that'll be on this video or not we'll see but uh, i already paid for it i owned it it's right up the bill sale and i'm getting my truck Mine all mine. And now we get to go figure out what we got to work with. And home sweet home and up on the lift. Kind of looking it over real quick. Threw some more air in the tires. It looks like 2007 was the last it was registered or ran out in 2007. So he said roughly 10 years and then that kind of lines up to about 10 years. And then inspection before that is Rhode Island is uh, 1990. So. That's 20, 26 years ago. I hope it's got a sticker if it was uh So I don't think I ever went and got a sticker because New Hampshire sticker would be right about here. They may got it run and registered it for a year and maybe it didn't pass inspection. We don't know. So we know it's stuck. So I figured my best option is gonna be yank those two plugs out of it. Uh, maybe we can do a bore scope so you can get down there and look inside and get some marble in it and possibly yeah uh, like the, the clutch cable is pulled and stuck there's the clutch lever so it was pulled and it's just staying in that position so the clutch is stuck um, one side of the motor or the other I'd like to see if we can get something on there to rotate it back and forth to, to un hopefully un unstick the motor if this is not gonna free up easily I am not going to continue on and uh, tear this thing down and build it up. It's just not cost uh, effective to go do that and I can get my money back out of it. Just putting it back on Craigslist for somebody else to put a bike together or if somebody else wants to carry the torch. Enough gabbing. Let me uh, get those plugs out of there and see what we got. Hey, right, we're going to go see if this camera in a camera thing works. This is one of those uh, Harbor Freight uh, four scopes. The only problem with it is the neck of it is so fat it won't go down a uh, that plug hole it only fits those really large ones but having said that I'm not sure how well this is just gonna show up with the reflection of the overhead lights down how's this gonna work but you can kind of see the bore on this side doesn't look too bad I know it's horrible footage I apologize but when I'm looking at it I can see the uh, the walls maybe right there as I said you can kind of see where there's a like a skid mark on there but it doesn't look like it's totally packed crud <clears throat> I came over the other side the plug was harder to get out and uh, see that white kind of growing around that one piston down there it's a corrosion aluminum corrosion of some sort So I think um, it should be able to come back. So I am gonna go spray some oil in there. I think I still have some marble, marble mystery oil around. We we'll use that. If not, I will probably go for uh, maybe some automatic transmission fluid and acetone of sorts. But I gotta figure out how to get in there to uh, do some turning and be able to, to rock the motor back and forth. So I may try popping some covers off, and we'll see what we got while that's uh, soaking. But let me get some oil in those and uh, see what we get. And... That should be more than enough. Love the smell of that stuff. It's got almost like a... Uh, black cherry smell to it 
And I'm more than enough for you. Now you know I'm gonna go, if I get that freed up, I'm gonna go ahead and crank that. I'm gonna eat that oil in the face if I forget. So you guys remind me. You get it free. Stay out of the way when you crank it. And today's little tidbit of information. If you try taking a Phillips screwdriver in there and try turning that out of there, more than likely you're gonna be screwed and you're gonna strip it out. This is the tool that takes care of that. It's an impact driver. And you can change bits on them. A lot of times they have either half or threes. This one's got a half inch. You can actually put sockets on it, but essentially you want to kind of use it for this kind of affair. And what this does, make sure you're in there. You whack the ass out of it with a hammer and you're applying pressure in and it's turning at the same time. So it kind of makes it so it doesn't want to be able to rip out of there. Not that it still can't, but. It's even still ripping out. So I gotta work on that. So I had to break down to the trusty drill on two of them. But we're in, I think. Gotta get the cover off. Gotta find a good place to see if you can kind of tap on it from the back side. Let's try it right there. left of my nasty screws. But it looks like we got something we can kind of work with right there, hopefully. As long as we're gingerly with it. And it's looking like it's probably been a wrench on it before, maybe. I see a little bit of, a little bit of chewing right there. All right, so let's go get, it looks like, I'm gonna guess that's a 15. What do you think? 14 or 15? Just get a hair out of it. I wonder if it might go better off with those holes. I'm not sure if that's set up for a puller. I got threads in them. I don't see threads in there. Just hoping to, uh, maybe we can get two screwdrivers. Something to wrench on besides wrenching on just that, um, that nut right there. So we can get a little bit more torque on it. And they are going in there too, so you can get some of that uh, metal shrapnels out of there. There's one like that. It's all wet. I don't think they're causing anything to be stuck though. Alright, so I'm going to go, uh, may go and get like a uh, breaker bar and a socket of sorts, and we'll see if we can get something a little bit more leverage on there. And just Start rocking it back and forth, see if we can get it to break. I see movement.
I'm gonna pull that bolt out. I wanna look and see what size that is. Make sure that's something that's not real tiny that I'm gonna snap off and, and regret. Yeah, it's decent. Well, let's not overdo it. Worst case is I could probably put the bike back in fifth gear and rock it with that. See, we're gonna, I'm going to work at this a little bit more. I don't know if it's showing up, but I'm watching like right here. You can see it's moving back and forth a hair. It may be... Uh, bolt keeps getting tighter and tighter. I'm afraid I'm going to snap that bolt. I don't want to push my luck. So I'm going to see if maybe I can come up with something I can stick in here, like a couple of dowels or something I can kind of yank on a little bit more uh, aggressive. I put the uh, bike up in the air a little bit. Let's put it in Let's try that. Try yanking on that for a little bit. What did I say? <laughs> you guys get it in your eye? You alright? Got some speckles on the camera. I told you. I told you to watch out for that spot. That's a good sign. It means it moved. Hopefully your guys' eyeballs are still clear. Let me get that for you. And the camera is, uh, the autofocus will work real good now. All right, let's see if we can do that a little bit more. <laughs> what do you think, the smart thing to do dude, is put a rag over that? You lose the comedic effect. Guess you should do the other side too, huh? The other side. Worked out pretty good. Um, I think probably my best bet would be now is probably to take the jumper pack and uh, we'll put it to the starter and we'll spin it. Just kind of let it polish itself up inside there. I'm, easy, I'm able to push it through by hand. Trails. And that's a good thing. An external, yeah, I should be able to get power right on that, right on that guy, and do our again our best to stay out of harm's way. Get her in neutral. We'll put the uh, the pump cover back on it. I tried to see if there's any access from this side, but there's nothing to grab onto. But I think we're good. You think we'll get contact? <laughs> Oh, 
Well, that's good. I uh, did check the oil, the oil looked real clean in it and it was full. So that was done. So now, I think, um, we might try putting the jumper pack to the battery and we'll turn the key on and we'll see if we get any kind of spark from this situation. So I took the jumper pack and I put it where the battery was and I tried to see if I can get the electric start button to turn on or even just like the neutral safety light to kind of turn on and nothing is happening. Uh, so I went and put the jumper pack back on the starter and I turned the key on to the on position and I wanted to see if I got any spark. And I have nothing, so um, yeah, that could be the reason why it wasn't running before, or, or who knows. So, uh, I got a wire off of right here. So I'm not sure where that broke off of. That could be uh, meant to go up to the battery, maybe a ground, or it went down here in this holster. But judging by the fact that they came from, the, it's broken out of up here and not run down there, I would probably think that that probably went up to the battery as a ground. Of sorts so the connections on there are kind of cruddy so I figure we'll take that apart and see if we can get some cleaning action going I'll, I'll get a battery charger on there and we'll put test light on it and see if that battery actually even uh, decides to recover at all and to actually see if we have any little tit that's missing that's kind of a well I'll look I'll see if I can find anything uh, on there showing the other end of where that wire broke off of. So I screwed around, cleaned up the battery, and uh, all that wire jibber jabber that's up there. There's a test light, there's a jumper to that green lead for ground, and um, I like the test light. If I unplug it, I can kind of see that the battery's taking a charge. So that's good. But again, still no crank, no, I'm not getting any uh, kind of signal up front, uh, neutral safety light. I'm not sure what should or shouldn't turn on, but I figure at least that uh, would come into play if it's even working. But so I decided to jump over the other side and look at the points. The generally thing that sits with points has an issue. And uh, got dual points on it. I'm not seeing big mushrooms growing out of them or anything. But what I do see is I need a poker. Oh, it's gonna show up. I see uh, that wire right there it looks like it's digging into the base of the points right there. That's a bear right there. So that would ground him out. I think. One way to tell. I still have the jumper pack hooked up. The key. Turn the key to on. Yeah. Goosey starter too, huh? So I'm going to try running some uh, files through them. I'm going to go clean them anyway just because it, it needs to be done. I'm looking for where the condenser is on this. I'm not seeing a condenser. Could be hidden somewhere else. And that wire going is looking... That wire doesn't look all that hot. I may pull the tank off. It might be up there somewhere. So, more homework yet to do. Okay, let me get those points cleaned and see if that does anything. So I'm jumping around and looking at different things and wiring and I kind of go and find. And uh, we got a fuse up here and I probed the one side and I got power. And I probed the other side of the fuse I got power. But if I, if I probe the housing, let's see if that shows again. Power, power. But coming out of it to over here, there's nothing. So the connection between the fuse and the holder is no good. So I'm not getting whatever that 12 volt feed is, which is probably uh, what we talked about for the dash light and stuff. So I'm gonna go pop that out of there. We'll go clean that up and see if that um, brings anything back to uh, more of a run condition. 
So I cleaned up that wire and uh, what that did was allow power to go to the headlight and the tail light. I don't have any uh, crank option on it yet, I don't think. Gauge lights. There's lights lit on that too, but I don't think I have any. Huh? Yeah, maybe. A little something right here. Doesn't sound like it's all that. I think like that relay is all that healthy though. But I have the capacity of cranking that over manually. Let's see what we get. But well, we still don't have sparks, so that's still not our issue. Uh, I have a feeling it may have been uh, shut down due to no spark, so we may be chasing something that was an original condition anyway. So chasing. I see a condenser, but it's a it's a strange looking condenser. It's got a fairly long. That's kind of normally what a condenser looks like. About that size. And that one. I don't know if it's just two of them back to back or, or what it is. Now let me uh, start farting around with uh, maybe cleaning up some uh, wiring up in here. And see what we got. Also might uh, help put a plug on the other side of it too. Sometimes I need to see that. So started thinking... Uh, about the kill switch and the wiring going to the kill switch and where does that go. So there's a regular kill up on a handlebar. They run the wires down through the handlebar and they kind of make everything junction inside the headlight. So I pop the headlight open and it's just kind of like poking and hoping around. Again, I still haven't looked at what colors things are, but I noticed this one and I don't know if it's going to show or pick up, but if you see the, the jacket of it is kind of cooked and baked on it. And if you grab that end of the wire and that end of the wire, it's got a weird, like, feels like it's disconnected in between it. So you can kind of move it around. Actually, you can kind of see right now, it just seems like it, it twisted itself in half, now didn't it? Oh, there you go. So that guy's not even plugged in. So, that could be an issue right there, too. So I'm going to go clean them up and get a contact back on those, and that might have been where our... Uh, you know, it looks like it, maybe it was making and not making and kind of... Because he said it was kind of like stuttering and cutting out when the last time he wrote it. So if that was the case and that knuckle was kind of coming apart right there, that might be it right there. So I'm going to go get those cleaned up. We'll put them back together and we'll try again. Alright, let's see if that made an improvement. Oh, oh, oh. There's your daddy. That was it. Awesome. Sometimes that could be a bitch to chase. So we got spark. You know what the next thing is, don't you? We're going to dribble a little bit of fuel down that side, a little bit of fuel down the other side, put the plug wires back in, and uh, fire it up. But before we go do that, let me just make sure we got spark on both sides. Because it, it, it is two separate coils. Yes, yes we do. All right, let's get some fuel. Let's back you up for the shot. See if she goes and putters and fires. A little bit of fuel in each one of them. Come out. Try it again. 
I gotta refuel my fuel. I gotta fill up my little squirt bottle. I got nothing else left to put in there. Let's try again. I think uh, we may have a, uh, a good candidate here. Uh, carburetors are going to be next. The float is not in it, so that could be an issue. So we may need some carb kits and some carb uh, parts, but uh, we'll cut and take them apart. Let's see what we got. Uh, I may go play and try squirting some fuel in it and doing this and doing that, trying to get, see if we can get it run for a little bit longer. But uh, I think it's going to be pretty good. Uh, I'm going to shut this one down right here. Yeah, I know, I know. But, uh, you know, i got to keep something. Something for the next one, right? So again, guys, thanks for watching, comment, subscribing. Oh, yeah, and that smells like peppermint, not whatever I said, black cherry. <laughs> that was close, right? I just took some fuel and I filled up the fuel lines going through the carbs. i got to take the carbs apart anyway, but I'm going to see what would happen. running on the left cylinder not so much on the right cylinder though but I have a feeling there is no float inside there I think that's the inside of that guy so uh, yeah
spotted to on this side. I think either, either flooded or it's just uh, the fuel is so far off this side can't run. I'm going to do a compression test on it.